Welcome to Euro C Sucks, the weekly podcast where we review and critique the best and the worst fan-created original characters from the My Little Pony fandom. This show is unscripted and unfiltered, so moderate language will be used. As well, the show can be a little heavy on the critique at times. That being said, if you are easily offended, don't watch. If not, feel free to join us for this week's show. This is episode 31 for October 3rd, 2014. This week, we show off our six skateboarding with some Ollie Corn transitions into a Pop Shove Wing 60, followed up by a front horn rail slide. My name is Mofi Thunderbirds. I'm the host and show manager. I am joined by Commander Sparkle, Assistant Project Manager. Many Bobo, I'm in charge of gathering questions and viewer interaction. And I'm Smooth Sailing, and I'm the editor. So, like I said in the intro, this is our Alicorn episode. We are going to be looking at winged and magical using characters. And just like before with our previous episode, uh, we realized that some uh, Alicorn OCs are seriously hated on, and nobody should have an Alicorn OC, but that's not necessarily true. To say that somebody can't have a a specific character kind of stifles creativity and kind of sucks like a lot. You kind of sound like a jerk. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking again about how you can have an alicorn, but not do the things that people hate about alicorns. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the show this week. But before we get into that, um, fan art. Well, we got got some fan art, that's for sure. Well, you say Um, we, but really, it's you. I mean, I, I I did get a, a a good amount of fan art, but I feel like we as a whole got a decent amount but, of fan art too. But I feel that uh, you got <laughs> a might, little bit more fan art because there, of a certain reason. There might be a small event happening tomorrow from recording day, as in mo- the Monday previous to this being released. Yeah, as, uh, tomorrow is totally the day I go to this one cool Mexican restaurant. Yeah, because that's why yeah. and that's why I'm, I'm getting yeah. tons of fan art because you're going to a Mexican yeah, tomorrow, restaurant. Yeah, tomorrow tomorrow's the day that he goes to a Mexican restaurant and then we celebrate Medi's birthday. Yeah, yeah, and then we celebrate Medi's birthday in like a week, which is actually tomorrow <laughs> as of the day this is released. Yeah, so uh, my birthday is uh, five days before his, and then Medi's is the day after this is released. So birthday stuff Ooh, Saturday. Yay. Hey, we're both. Commander Monday, Medi Saturday. How does that make you feel, Medi? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's gonna be that those like few days where I'm like, hey, it's like being 18, <laughs> and I just be a total jackass. Uh. Really quickly, just before we get into anything else, I would just like to thank everyone who has made me fan art for my birthday, or just in general, but specifically for my birthday, and anyone planning to make me stuff for my birthday. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Also, the only things that are in this episode are going to be the ones that we had in the folder at this time. So even if you do things and put them or get them out there for Commander's birthday, on Commander's birthday, it's not going to be in this episode. It'll be in next episode. Yeah, check back. It'll be in the next next episode. Yay! And all the Medi stuff will be in next episode also. So... Yeah, everybody's things. Uh, I want to talk about Akamaru Stalker's horse drawings of us. I think they're really cool. Yeah. I like the fact that, like, they're actual horses. Nay. Because it's interesting seeing us as, like, horses. <laughs> a horse. Horse. We, we no longer can pwn the pwn, but we can the horse. Oh, someone did steal my tie. I'm not at all. That made you very sad, Momofy. But don't worry, you became quiet as fuck. No, no, dude, dude, he's manly. I'm manly. I am so manly. You're adorable. Though that heart suit does not. No, no, thank you. Stop. Never wear that again. It's great. I love it. So majestic. Let's see. Apparently, I got the uh, sparkle dog. Bucket challenge. The sparkle bucket challenge? Sparkle bucket. No, get out of here. Go home. Go home. You're done. <laughs> Show's over. I quit. Uh, Moving on to news this week. Uh, as of recording this last week, Equestria Girls happened. Uh, Commander, Commander and I have seen it. Maddie hasn't seen it. And Smooth hasn't seen it. 
So me and my commander both like it, but we will save our opinions of it for another episode because we don't want, we obviously don't want to spoil it for uh um but other news, I finally found the Die of Fate. Oh good. The, yeah. The, oh wait, it was missing. Yeah. When did that happen two or three weeks ago? Yeah. I've been living a lie. The Die yeah. of Fate the last three weeks has been actually a D eight. Not a D four or, or a computer. Uh, yeah. no. Or a computer with first week. Yeah, dice yeah. First week. But anyway, uh, it's back, and you can have a proper die sound instead of a uh, rolling the die of fate. It rolls a three this week, so many. <laughs> Tell me what you got here, buddy. All right, so uh, my good OC this week is an OC called uh, Subject Seventy. Subject 70, uh, she has a few names, uh, Nameless, Blank, Canvas, Clone 70, Shy Feathers, uh, Brat slash Pests. Oh, She's, uh, yeah, female. those are all of my favorite nicknames. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's a female alicorn, and, uh, she's in the range between CMC to Main 6, She's a very uh, curious type of uh, pony because uh, she wasn't ex- she wasn't exactly born. She's a cloned experiment, oh, really, by a bunch of unicorns in the outskirts of Equestria because they realized that you un- that alicorns are pretty fucking useful. So instead of waiting for another person to find their super special talent, they thought, "I wonder if we could genetically clone them." And they got approval from Celestia. And they learned that, no, you really can't. Hmm. It's really, really hard. Half the time, the mares don't seem to be able to produce fucking alicorns. Except for suspect or subject 70. She's the, she was one of the few to be a successful clone. Hmm. Uh... And, uh, she can't really use magic all that well. Or, not at all, really. She, instead of using her horn for magic, she uses it like any normal animal would for hunting. Brutal. And, uh, she can't really fly all that well, either. (laughs) And, uh, how she escaped her facility is in her story. Which I kind of wish was in this little bit of backstory, if I had to nitpick the backstory. But uh, yeah, she got out, and she's being hunted by scientists because they consider her a possible threat. A possible threat. She's an alicorn, but she can't do magic or fly very well. So she is technically weaker than a pegasus. But Though... they don't know if she could develop. Yeah. Yeah, because because uh, reading through this, like their their age, like d- for development, it seems like is. The C- CMC to uh, main six age, but they've been alive for about six months. So, some g- weird yeah. genetic shit going on right now. Makes sense. A lot of yeah. uh, gene splicing fun. Which, I feel that having, like, an alicorn where they can't use the perks of being an alicorn, this, this makes sense in this case. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's not like she was born an alicorn, and then she was like, oh, but your wings don't work. Oh, oh, your wings don't work. Sucks for you. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Um, I think that, like, it's it's definitely, it's a different character, and I'm just, like, I know that you technically, like, you just assume it's normal universe until it's stated otherwise, but I feel that, this is an AU, <laughs> like, like there's there's nothing about this that does there, oh, everything about this screams AU. And well, I feel let's just that, say that if it's not an AU, it's terrible. Yeah, which I mean, I I feel that you can just assume it, like, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. But in the yeah, also main problem with this, Celestia gave permission. Um, yeah, uh, no. Well, they use Celestia's DNA to make her. Still. But she gave permission as long as it was 20 feet underground, and it was secure enough that if, none of them would escape until deemed worthy enough. As long as you can't pin it on me. 
I think she's incredibly cute. I mean... Oh, yeah, so the reason she's all white is not because she was a clone of Celestia. It's because it's uh, every clone's palette. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean... Yeah, because they're a blank slate. Oh. But when I first saw this character, I was just like, God, you know, I don't. But after now, Medi has explained it a little bit further. I'm like, yeah, I can dig it. And the idea of it being in an AU, I like more. So make it an AU. This sounds like actually a really cool fan fiction character. I I think so. Like, I think, if, I really think cool. she has written a fan fiction. It's just not linked here. Oh well, damn. Come on, advertise that shit. Because it does say that her escape from the facility is uh, one of her is like an arc. Escape from the facility. How she got away from the scientist arc of the story. Uh, I really like her story, and I really like how... I, I, I just really like this character in general. I think it's like one of the better alicorns I've seen. Even though she is like normally the alicorn I hate with the uh, oh my horn doesn't work oh my wings don't work but, but at it, least I but it works I have here. like pretty good reason why they don't work uh, and I it's think... not just because oh you see I just I can't I'm yeah. not good at one of them. Thank you for bringing that one in there, Betty. Uh, moving on to the next one, we have another three, a four. So that means it's time for smooth. Okay. Uh, hey, you guys remember, like, a hell ton of time ago, maybe at, like, either the first or the second fan submitted kind of thing? Mm, no. Um. <laughs> well, I hope you do, because this is Lady Borealis. Um, she is from the same universe as Fading Dawn. And, uh, she, she was actually the leader of, um, Draft Dells. Okay, there we go. Um, she was the leader of it before, um, she eventually had to give her life to protect her son. Unfortunately, I couldn't really find any backstory on her, but, um, apparently the world became absolutely terrible after she died. Uh, stupid, evil king guy took over, um, Lady Borealis's, um, talent is uh, she was apparently an alicorn who painted colors in the sky kind of thing. You know, Borealis. Whoa. No, I get it. Besides, like, the concept of her and want a lot more information about her, I like her color palette. It's really nice, and none of the colors are, like... I mean, the darkest color looks a little too dark, but the others are... Freaking amazing. Also, cutie mark for Borealis. Makes sense. Mm. And I like it. And I like the colors. Yeah. How she herself is incredibly monochromatic, and then all of a sudden, Borealis colors. Yeah. Yeah. Colors in the sky. I can dig it. Freaking beautiful. Also, by the way, I, I don't... I don't... I don't think I technically said this flat out, but this is definitely AU. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, J just 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 to make sure. It it's interesting how many of these alicorns are just like, yep, AU. You know, we're just like mm. they kind of have to yeah, be. Like, yeah. It, like yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it makes the most sense. Like yeah, I really like it when uh, artists have this overarching or overarching. Uh, idea, story, plan, whatever, with a bunch of characters, and they actually make the characters. Like, obviously, if you just write a bunch of characters, okay, great, you have a bunch of characters. But it doesn't, at least for me, it doesn't feel real until they actually put those characters out in, like, a visual sense, like, whether it's art or whatever. And I love finding all these different characters uh, in, that are submitted to us by the same artist, and it's like, oh, yeah, this character is really in the same universe as this other character, like uh, the princess that decided she just wants to go act, and uh, this one with the mocha brown one that her father's like, no, you're not going to get the throne or something like that. Or uh, 
you know, all those or like what um, Weird Guy is doing. I mean, it's a whole bunch of great things, in my opinion. I really like it. It's good stories. I think it looks cool. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of that bright color in the cutie mark, though. It's very off-putting that it just doesn't look right. But it's because of colors in the sky making. It's her talent. She's like the night sky, and she's making the colors her talent. Okay, but I'm just still saying that that color doesn't look right there. I'm not but saying it... that the color is bad. I would just change it up a little bit because it just doesn't look right. I, still, I, like I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with them. I don't see anything wrong with it either. I'm also not a huge fan of her uh, spots on her hooves. Yeah. yeah. Especially like the Rorschach test going on. Um, not... Ink blots. Mm, I disagree, but I can see how you... What do you see here? The same thing I see on my other three hooves. Thank you. Uh, smooth, I can't remember. Did you say that she is she a good character or a a, po- a good positive character or a bad character? Well, everything went to crap after she died, so In th- I'm assuming she was a good, right, and just leader. Hmm. Well, because her color palette makes her almost like you know kind of feel like a bad character, but not. That's not necessarily, like, a damning thing. Like, well, like... I mean, if she's supposed to be a good, a good like, leader character, she looks kind of more either neutral or evil-ish. Mm-hmm. And that may give off a bad tone when you're trying to introduce this character to someone who just, you just want to show them the character. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I feel one thing that, uh, can kind of add to that sort of appearing to be sort of not necessarily evil, but not not a like archetypal good character is uh, all the uh, spiral stuff in the main, because a lot of the, like a lot of things like that are present in different sort of like kind of evil or scary seeming things. Like especially especially the big one or the, the tail in particular is what made me feel that way. Like with the the massive spiral stuff at the end, which that is a like I would I would really I would hate to vector this character just because there's so many things going on in the main and tail. Um, I don't get the natural good vibe from this character, and you know that could be a character all into itself is to like not judge a book by its cover. But this character seems to have a completely different theme in mind, and that's why this doesn't work well. Maybe it's just because I've known this character was. Um, gave her life to save her son for, like, a really long time, but I, like, can't even see evil anymore. I, I yeah. really would be interested to, like, hear from, or see what the, like, the uh, owner of the character would, ha- like, has in mind for, um, the, uh, the OC, because, like, you could go either way with it. Like, I, I, given that they did it, um, uh, like give her life to protect their like son, that definitely makes it gives them the appearance of, and seeming like they're a good character. I just think it'd be nice to have a little bit more fleshed out story to that, because it's, it's an interesting story, and I think that'd be that'd be nice. Yeah, I think she's incredibly cute. I actually like her main um and tail. Uh, I like her color palette, and I want to give her a hug. Uh, Wolven. Well, Moving on to the next one. Uh, looks like I have to go next. Uh, so let's take a look at the OC I brought to the party. So the OC I brought into the party today is called Firelight. Firelight is a alicorn. And she lives in a magical land called Questria. Um, there, uh, she has um, things on her that are... Uh, uh, the little um, stones are fire stones, and um, she is super cool, and she does things, and she is, like, the highest power in the land. Gem she wears gives her more magic. Um, they're, the artist notes that they are gaudy as hell, but they are effective. 
Uh, she likes using lots of fire spells. Uh, her cutie mark is very simple because all cutie marks are simple and generic in Equestria. Uh, they are essentially meaningless, but are nothing more than badges you can swap out whenever you want. So this is kind of a weird thing for a pony, because, oh wait, guess what? Uh, Questria is a video game in this other world, and Firelight is really a character owned by Lantern Light. What? Yes. Uh, oh, oh, I get it. So, uh, it's this, uh, Firelight wow. is really, uh, MM, she even says, it's like, uh, Lantern Light likes playing, uh, Equestria, which is, quote, basically the magical pony equivalent of an MMORPG. Uh, That's actually, wow. Yeah. Um, so, it, does this count as an alicorn? I'm counting it as an alicorn because it's actually good. <laughs> Firelight is really the character in an MMORPG uh, played by Lantern Light. Lantern Light is actually a lighthouse keeper. And she doesn't have that much time to hang out with her friends, such as Sea Smoke. The reason uh, Lantern Light plays the MMOs is because she is a lighthouse attendant, so she actually has to be up during the odd hours of the night so that ships in the night don't crash. So she sits there and it's like, okay, well, you know, uh, she's not able to hang out with her friends because she's awake while they sleep. Sort of a original Luna problem she had. Uh, so, so she turns to this game, to which she meets uh, this one character called Candy Cloud, and she's kind of one of those characters. Or Candy Cloud is one of those characters that pretty much RPs in a non-RP server, pretty much. And it's just like, God damn it. We, we, at least I know those people. As I go out to quest, I say, yes, let's go, kind of thing, where everyone else is just like, okay, we gotta get this quest, we gotta go and kill the mobs, do the thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we can get the cool armor. Uh, yes, let us adventure out, shut up. Let's go do forth, my brethren! Medi, do you have uh, your uh, spells Equestria. bound to, uh, what you call no, it? Make you sure see, you have it ready. Homified. I don't have spells bound because I was my old character. I'm playing my new character. Wait, you're not our healer? No, I'm your tank now. God damn it. All right. So, um, like I said, the, it's it's one of those things that uh, Lantern Light has a large chunk of story to like incorporate all these different elements of her story into it that makes it feel more rounded out. But despite the fact that I'm trying to focus more on Firelight, Firelight kind of doesn't have a story, and they don't go into much of what she does in the game. Uh, they talk briefly about at the very end where uh, how apparently Cloudy Candy Cloud's betrayal is the major turning point when she realizes that she's uh, been thinking of these ponies in her game as close friends, but in reality she doesn't know who any of them really are. Um, I don't know if I missed where they explained how Candy was, like betrayed her. Uh, looking at the part where it talks about Candy Cloud, it talks about how she's not actually as obsessed as her friends think she are. She is about it, and she really gets that it's all a game, and she really, like, she doesn't, like, have a problem with, like, kind of just abandoning Lantern at times, just being like, eh. I, I wouldn't label that as betrayal. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sh- well, that's, that's just kind of being a jerk in yeah. your time of need. We're questing, come on. Yeah, that's kind of, that's, that's more of just a dick move, in my opinion. That's not really a betrayal, like, that's something like if you did that to, cotton, uh, to uh, the candy pony, it's like, okay, they would call it a betrayal. It'd be like, you've betrayed me this day. I had my my freaking internet went out. Too bad. You've uh, abandoned the fight on the battlefield as I gathered I your rally. I publicly denounce you. I denounce you from this group. I crashed. My, my processor <laughs> was literally on fire. I hate her white, though, in the video game world. Well, of course. Ooh, There's a lot gaudy in the video game world. It's not pure white, or at least it's... But it's so close, you can barely tell it apart yeah. from It's that so white. close, you can taste it. Stop. Ooh, don't like it. Anyway. Also, it looks like her outline color doesn't change. And is Alicorn an option in this game? Or is it no. just... Like, Alicorn in this video game is, like, a highest level. It's like getting, uh... 
Oh, it's epic levels. Okay, so she's epic level then. Yeah, she's epic. What well, she, it says well, that she? Fuck, why are you playing this character anymore? Once you reach epic level, you retire the character and move on. You, she actually <laughs> well, does but... not like playing this character now because of the fact that it is pointless. Um, I think that overall this OC is pretty good. I mean, like the the white in the um, video game version is one of those things that I would have. Oh, I have a little bit of a complaint about, but it's not that bad it doesn't like ruin the character because it's a video game character i've seen some fucking yeah, awful yeah, some, video game so, characters sometimes sometimes video games do not have good colorization i think this is a well done character yeah i like no, I the, everything about it i like I the idea that the game yeah. yeah i do too despite the fact that we're having this great discussion about the oc it's time to move on from this oc on to uh, the last OC for this episode, Commanders. Well, so uh, this is Andromeda. They are a, or also their nickname is Andy, which I find interesting because this is a female pony. And I don't normally hear that as a female nickname, but I, I think that's pretty cool. Nah. Um, actually, this is the pony universe where that's just a nickname because it's a nickname. Andy has no actual meaning. It's not for Andrew, it's for Andromeda. Fuck. Come on. Fuck off. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I'm just saying. I'm just dick. saying. They are roughly 500 years old, and they are they are immortal. Um, their uh, cutie mark is five stars, wh- whose colors match that of her mane and tail. Her, they're slightly taller than an average pony, but with an uh, alicorn body type. So I'd say, like, uh, I'd say somewhere between like Twilight and Cadence, I guess. The art style makes it seem like they're a little bit taller, but that's where I would say based on their description. Um, they were sort of they were born close to like Manhattan, like in the outskirts of that, but they currently reside in Canterlot in one of the wings of the castle. Their occupation is that they create stars for Princess Luna that, that help, she uh, scatters across the sky, and their talent is sort of creating delicate things that most ponies can't, that would, or at least would have some difficulty with. Her personality is uh, that she's a pretty modest, and she doesn't really speak that much unless she's spoken to. Um, she never really, like, being uh, like 500 years old, her flaw, or her biggest flaw, is that she has a hard time adapting to the changes in society in modern times, and she uh, speaks in old English terms, uh, Shakespeanean, if you would. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, because of her uh, Shakespeanean uh, way of speaking, she often gets misinterpreted with what she's saying. Uh... Her likes are the night sky, who would have guessed, and creating delicate things, and she dislikes bright sunlight. Now, really quickly before I get into the backstory, there she's from an AU where Luna was not banished, and she would but she wouldn't just raise the moon and stuff. She also would create stars out of like this magical glass, and that would sort of she was a bit grumpy because of that. So there were some uh constantly being tired and stuff because yeah, constant work because like like not having breaks but uh because there are no stars in the sky go make some no breaks on the star strain <sighs> but anyways um because of this in like in this au there are some alicorns who were originally uh, earth pegasus and unicorns who re- achieved that status uh after being like taught different things that they would need to know to sort of like, be able to help and assist the princesses, but they, they are not princesses themselves. Anyways, getting on to the, uh, backstory, just gonna go through, I'm gonna go through mostly the TLDR, uh, cause it's, it's, it's long enough, if you wanna read the whole thing, it's right there. Um, we anyways, highly suggest you do. Yeah, yeah, it's no, it's, it's, I think it's a good story. But anyways, they were a pretty, like, a sort of smaller, uh, unicorn who had pretty weak magic, only could really levitate things, but she would, like, use that to help her when she would, like, build, like, birdhouses, and then eventually moved on to fl- uh, floral arrangements to help attract the birds. And for a long time, she thought that her cutie mark would involve that, 
But then uh, she, she never really got it after, like, multiple years. And then after like, a while, like, a star, one of the stars that would have put in the sky, sort of crashed in front of her house. And so she decided, oh, I'll fix this up. And when she woke up, uh, and she, like, she fixed it up, like, apparently fantastically. And actually got her cutie mark, but was so tired from how hard she was working that she didn't even realize it and passed out. And then in the morning, she uh, woke up with uh, Luna right there, and Luna basically asks her, like, hey, like, do you want to, like, like help me doing this, like, like full time? You want a job, kid? <laughs> but uh, asks her if she can move to Canada a lot and help repair and create more stars. And, uh, like, she's a little bit reluctant, but then tell- Luna says that both her and her mother can move there, and she decides to do that. And then she finishes off her training and becomes an Alicorn Starcrafter. Just a couple little things before we get into the actual aesthetics. This, sort of, this first one ties into that is her mane doesn't flow or anything like Celestia or um, Luna. It's just it's a normal mane. And she also has a bit of a hard time like making friends because of that whole, you know, immortality. Everyone I know is going to die before me thing. It's difficult. So she mostly sticks to immortals and near immortal beings. I like her cutie mark. Oh my god! Yeah, I I think it's a pretty good cutie mark. I I'm a bit com- I am a bit confused on the special talent, but I like the cutie mark a lot. I like it because of how colorful it is. I like how it follows the tail's pattern and color design. Yeah, it's like very dark blue, and goes to a purplish blue, then goes to like a purple or a poopy brown orange, mm-hmm. and it goes to a normal orange, and then it goes to a yellow. Just like her tail and her mane. One thing that interests me, though, is I would like. I wonder if they are if their mane was like this, or if it did, like did, did, didn't have the gradient, or what what she looked like before she was an alicorn. Because I wonder, like, because she, she has these little star like specks. I like. I wish I'm not sure. Are they just? part of her main maybe she just gets those like little bits of star from working with them or which that would be that'd be interesting so one thing i i really like is i like the way that both the uh, mane and the tail flow like d- like uh, like disregarding the colors which i i love i just like i love the design and the shape of them they're both these really long flowing mane and tail which i think um, without is... without flowing well not, they're not literally flowing yeah yeah yeah, I just wanted to state. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not like ethereally flowing. <laughs> Realistic flowing, <laughs> not like, celestial. They're, they're like not hair. flowing like we're flowing through oceans. Going, going on. But yeah, um, but I think it's I think it's really cool, and I like that. I think it makes sense for these like like since she's like five hundred years old. I think it's really like a, a good idea to have her have like this really long mane. Or I think it's it makes a lot more sense because like she's had she has had a long time to grow her mane and do all these things. And she's just sort of like eh, I'm just gonna like let it go. Just fuck it. I also really love those eyes. They're really they're really nice. I like the color. They're cute. 